Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the second tutorial on how to texture this barrel using Substance Painter. In the last tutorial, we created the wood paneling for our barrel. Then in this tutorial, we are going to go over metal and how to not only make it metallic, but also how to put rust on it. And we're also going to make it rise using height. So we have a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and get started. Next, we want to do the metal. So again, we can go all the way to all and then type in metal. And there's multiple versions of metal that you can choose from. Let's see. I am going to, well, we're trying to create something a little rusty. And we're, but we also want something a little bit to start off a little clean. So we don't want to go all rust because then that's going to be crazy. We just want something a little bit, maybe like a steel ruined or a steel rough. So let's try steel ruined. I'm going to drag this up to the top. And, oh, I kind of like that. That's fun. Let's go ahead and create a mask. Right click, add black mask. Now, again, we went over this in a previous substance tutorial. So please make sure you watch those. Um, otherwise, it's maybe a little accelerated for you. So just go ahead and do, do us both a favor and watch those previous tutorials. Uh, we go over this pretty thoroughly. All right, let's choose a square. So again, we're going to choose something that looks like a square right here. Perfect. And I'm going to increase my bracket. I am in the color white. So with that, again, I'm going to just click on this, Control Shift, drag, and then put something there. It's looking very pretty. Um, I'm going to make this one a little bigger. The one in the middle is usually a little bit bigger because it's the support. And I'm going to choose another one that's smaller here. Go along here. And then just to be safe. Let's go ahead and make sure that there's a su little support there and a little support there. And let's go a little bit like that. Cool. So that's looking pretty fun. Now again, you don't have to leave it like this. You can open it up and take a look like maybe the dirt is too much. Maybe it needs to be decreased. So there we go. There's bumps so you can change it. If you feel it's too much, you can always scale it down or scale it up. So you can always change this just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of calm it down a little bit. All right, so I like the look of this, but it's still real. It's still really shiny. So let's grab some rust. Now, I want to start building this. So if I click and drag this, you're going to notice that it builds on top of it. We want to make sure that the steel and the rust work together. So this is where the folders come in. I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to drag the rust and the steel inside the folder. So they're kind of working together. So rust is at the top, the steel ruined is at the bottom. And we do have a mask here and I want it to impact the whole thing. So instead of leaving it on just in this layer, what I can do is actually have the mask impact the whole folder. So I'm going to copy my mask and then I am going to add a black mask and then paste the mask. So there we go. So now I can take this one and I can remove the mask because the mask is being impacted at the folder level, which has everything in it. So that's really cool. All right. So now we have the rust. We have the steel. We have the rust. Let's let's uh, have some fun with this one. We're going to right click on it. We're going to add a black mask. We're going to use our fancy. We're going to right click on this and add a generator. Then we're going to add a generator. All right. Let's try dripping rust. There we go. So now you can see that we're getting some of that rust in there. Now I'm going to take a look at my generator, scroll down, take a look at rust, and I can make it a little stronger. I can go ahead and start increase, decreasing or increasing the contrast. Um, of course, you can spread the smoothness if you want to or decrease it. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Now I do feel like my steel is really shiny. So we can take a look at the attributes of the steel ruin and take a look at Let's scroll down and maybe play around with the roughness and the metallic, maybe calm down the metallic. We have to find the right map that plays around with this. So that's the sharpen. This is the edge highlight. Let's see if we can do anything with that. Okay, there we go. So you can see that I can increase the roughness and the metal is still going to look like metal, but it's not that strong. So I'm, I actually kind of like that. Maybe a little bit more metal just so it doesn't disappear, but I think that's going to work for me. Cool. So we have our wood planks that we've created ourselves. 
We have our Rust, which is working really well. Now, if you you're want to have some fun, you're more than welcome to take a look at this and see if Multiply might work better. So that makes it kind of dirty. You can also do Overlay. You know, like have some fun with the with all of these options because you just never know what you're going to get. I think I'm going to stick to normal. Now, notice that the steel has picked up the normal map. And that really doesn't work in a barrel. So what we need to tell it is that this is going to basically be on top of the bottom layer. So to do that, what we need to play around is with this little pull down menu right here. Right now we're in base color. If we change this to height, this will show us the height of all of the maps. And notice that it says LDGE. If I select this and say pass through, notice that it immediately just discovers the lines. So now it's on by itself, which is exactly what we want. So we are in a really, really good place. Now, one thing that we're missing though is the height for the metal. So we need to add that in here. So let's go ahead and add a fill layer. And under height, we're going to increase our height for this fill layer. Now let's not forget that we're still in um, height. Let's go back into base and I'm going to increase my height, you know, all the way to one. And I'm going to add a black layer just like we did before. And this time I'm going to, same thing, I'm going to copy the mask. So copy mask, select this fill layer and then paste the mask. And you'll notice that we get a normal map or at least a height. But our issue is, is that we have completely overcome the really cool steel that we built. So don't worry, just like we mentioned before, um, this affects the height, this affects the base color. So under base color, I can go into this fill layer and change it to zero. And you'll notice that the height information is still there, but the color information has disappeared. So I can do the same thing with roughness because I really don't need roughness because all that information should be in this layer. And then I can also get rid of metallicness because after all, all of it's being impacted by the layers below. So really what I just want is the height. So I have metallic, I mean, doesn't really have much of a normal map, but let's go ahead and do that. And I think I grabbed it all. So as long as base color, sorry, as long as height map is 100%, we're good to go. Now, if you want a bigger impact of that, we can always just duplicate this layer. So let's go ahead and select this and duplicate the layer. And we get a little stronger map as well. So you can see that the difference between this one and that one, it's a little, it just looks a little higher. All right, so, so far we have covered multiple layers in our Substance Painter. Um, I'm going to do myself a favor here and start labeling things because calling things Folders 1 doesn't really help, so I'm going to change this to Metal. Um, I'm going to create a folder for these guys as well. So this is going to be wood. Never know when I might need all of this. So I'm going to drag this over here. And then this is my height map. So I'm going to go ahead and just say height one. Whoops, I meant to say one. And then this can be height two. So somebody opens up, opens it up, and then they kind of turn this on and off. They're going to see, oh, okay, this only impacts height. So that's awesome. Okay, so now that we have all of this, let's go ahead, actually, I'm gonna go back to wood, and I feel like my contrast has disappeared, so I'm gonna go in and grab this colored lines, and maybe just increase my texture just a little bit, just to make sure that it stands out a little bit more. Cool. All right, so um, in the last tutorial, we went over stencils, so I wanted to do the same thing we did in Photoshop in the previous tutorial, where we put a stencil on here. So what I'm gonna do, is go over here to the bottom left and click on this little icon, which is basically adding a resource. I'm gonna add my resource. Now I've already created an image. So I have this fine wine logo. And if you look at it, you'll notice it's transparent, no background, it's just fine wine with a little icon. I save this as a PNG. So once again, add a resource. We're gonna go to our images. We're gonna go to our logo. And again, you can just make your own really fast and bring that in. You have to define it, so I'm going to call this a texture, and then I'm also going to choose it for Project Barrel 2, <laughs> and then Import. So you'll notice that it pops up right here, so that's perfect. So I'm going to align my object like so. This is the top of the barrel. I'm going to try to make it as nice and large as possible. 
and I am going to go all the way to the top here and create in just a regular layer, empty layer. And then what I'm going to do is choose projection. So go ahead and click on projection. And it's going to say there's nothing there. That's because we need to make it. So let's go ahead and turn off the height because I don't need it, the roughness, the metal. Well, maybe a little roughness. Let's add that in there. And no normal. This is there's and that should be good enough. So with roughness, I'm going to increase it to make sure that it's you know, a little bit shiny like paint, but not too bad. And for color, I'm just going to drag this into my base color. And there we go. So you can see where it is. Again, if you hold down S, you can see the image a little bit better. So that means you can scale it and try to fit it a little bit better, better into your object here. And with that, I can go ahead and start painting. I'm going to go ahead and paint. So you can see that because of my roughness is adding a little bit of that highlight. Let me go back to painting. So I don't know if I want that anymore because it's actually showing up. So let me undo what I just did. And let's go ahead and go back into projection. And I'm actually going to remove my roughness so it's just the color. Double check to make sure everything's looking good and then go ahead and paint. Now it's very clean so I am going to add should have picked a bigger brush, but here we are. And we do want it to be impacted by the normals underneath the height. So let's go ahead and leave it like that. And voila. So it's a little clean. So this is my logo. I'm going to, as always, add a black mask. I am going to add a generator. And then go ahead and grab, let's do this one. Now it's not enough, so let's go ahead and start messing it around with it until we actually see a little better of it. So you can see that we're getting that nice effect. It depends how much you want to you wanted to grow. Do you want a little bit? Do you want a lot? It's really up to you. Now you're not limited to just this, you know, let's remember that. So let's go ahead and maybe spread this, increase the smoothness a little bit. And you're not limited. You're more than welcome to right click and also add a paint layer. This paint layer, I can actually bring back some of that color. So down here, right now we have an alpha, but we can also type in grunge. And we're going to have a ton of grunge brushes. So it's really up to you which one you want. So I might grab, I don't know, this one. And I can actually maybe bring, bring it in and maybe I want a little bit more of that fine wine so I can actually see the E. And just kind of bring some of that back. Okay, now that's too clean. So if I click on the letter X, it will flip the color to black. So then I can make that go away a little bit. So it's all fun until you get what you want. And that is basically how you can create a barrel using substance. So we've learned a great deal. We've done some nice layering. We are using generators to create our own mask. We've uh, changed it a little bit more. We've got some nice things going on. You can see we have some nice specularity and things are looking really great. So uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to add a little bit more detail when it comes to dripping. And then after that, I'm going to show you guys how to export your files so that we can get this into Maya and ready to go. So in the meanwhile, if you thought you thought this was helpful, please like, share and subscribe. And also please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where we can you can get free downloads, free tutorials, and free ebooks, and so much more. So please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. I could really use your support. So again, thank you so much for watching and uh, spending some time with me and Substance. Hopefully you found this really helpful. Let me know if you have any questions by leaving a comment below. And I will see you in the next tutorial when we add more details, more information, and export it and bring it into Maya. I'll see you then.